Hello paratroopers, what's 73rd Air Bar Brigade? I'm Sergeant Poos and today as part of the Know Your Gear series, I'm going to show you the ins and outs of your Molly Assault Pack. The Molly Assault Pack is one piece of equipment part of the Molly system. So Molly stands for Modular Lightweight Load Carrying Equipment. So each piece of equipment of the Molly system is designed to actually work together. So for instance, this Molly Assault Pack is actually designed to attach to the large Molly rucksack. So if you didn't know what these straps are at the top, these are actually the frame attaching straps. They're designed to attach to the frame of the large Molly rucksack. Same for the female buckles right over here. So these are going to attach into the male buckles of the straps that close the top flap of your large rucksack. So let me bring the large rucksack into the frame, show you how it's done. The first thing you need to do is prepare your assault pack to attach it to the large rucksack. So for that, you're going to flip it over and you're going to activate the quick release buckle right over here. So for that, you're just gonna pull on this tab and it comes apart. So over here, you have this back sleeve. It's designed to stow away the adjustable shoulder carrying strap whenever we're gonna put it into this configuration. Same for this opening right over here, just to stow this away. Okay, just like that. Okay, same for the opposite side. Activate the quick release buckle, stow away. And then over here, stow away. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to loosen the webbing right over here for the frame attaching straps, just like that. Do the same for this one. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to open up those buckles and show you how it's done on the frame. So over here, my frame was issued with these two female buckles. So I suspect that that's actually designed to insert those males buckles of the assault pack into there. Okay, however, I've never seen it in any technical manual. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you what the technical manual shows you. You're gonna place it through these two holes right over here in the frame. So this strap through this hole over here and buckle it in. And then this strap over here through this hole right over here and you're just going to buckle that in. All right, so there it is. Now, these female buckles down here, all you gotta do is you detach the male buckle of your large rucksack and you attach it right there. Same for this side, there it is. Okay, so this is how I've seen it done in a technical manual. I've seen another technical manual that also shows you that you can attach the compression straps of your large rucksack into the female buckles of the compression straps of your assault pack, so just like this, okay? So I've seen it in a second technical manual like that. However, I don't really uh, think that it's correct but uh, it's one way that's done. The reason why I think that is because now you have this excess that's just hanging, and so I guess you would just tuck it under. But then again, I think it's just uh, um, kind of excessive and probably unnecessary, because really all you're trying to do is you're the, it's designed to have like an assault pack that uh, serves as a go bag, okay? So basically you get to an ORP, you drop your rucksacks, and then you uh, would follow on mission with just your assault pack. So. If the assault pack were full, because right now it's empty, so it's not too bad, but if it were full, then at that point, it would be a huge bulging item, and also the load would really increase the load on the soldier's back, which uh, I don't think is correct, and also it just would really hang back. Uh, you want the heavier weight towards closest to your back and not away from your back. Okay, so now I'm just gonna undo these buckles, and place it back how it was. I understand that in theory, this would work. In practicality, absolutely not. Okay, so I have never seen any soldier do this. Okay, so I'm gonna place the assault pack back into standalone configuration by attaching the frame attaching straps right over here. I'll secure this excess webbing later. By the way, soldiers like to use these to attach pieces of equipment. I've done it too. I think it would be preferable if we had them on the bottom side, but they, that's just my personal take. So let's go ahead and flip it over and attach the adjustable shoulder carrying straps. So for that, it's gonna be quite simple. All you gotta do is take your quick release buckle and you just insert it this way and all you got to do is apply inward pressure and it just clips on its own then you want to snap that snap fastener right over here do the same for the opposite side over here you just can grab that adjustable shoulder carrying strap take that quick release buckle and i'm just going to give you a side view this time you're just going to insert it and apply inward pressure okay and it just clips on its own fasten that snap fastener okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the top side over here you got two equipment slots so these are going to be for a hydration hose a radio antenna or your airborne attaching straps. So let's open up the main compartment over here so I can show you those airborne attaching straps. 
So over here, these are your airborne attaching straps. This will allow you to rig your assault pack for a combat jump. Okay, so in white, you have your snap hook attaching straps to which you will attach your snap hooks. Right now, I have them in storage configuration. And then over here in tan, you have your lowering line attaching strap to which you will attach your hook belt tape lowering line. Okay, so over here, you notice that there is a white shield. So this white shield, the purpose of it is to protect your back from a radio. So a bit of history over here. The Molly design was uh, created in 1997 and rolled out to the army around 2000 to 2001. Back then they had a Singar's radio. So what they did is that they created a pouch to insert into the assault pack and you would attach it to these two metal links. So these two metal links were intended for that radio pouch and a Singar's radio. It's outdated so that's why we don't use it anymore. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and open up that uh, main compartment just to give you an idea of how big it is. So it's about the width of my hand. That's how wide it is. So over here, here's the stitching of the main compartment. That's how wide it is. You can see that there's a drain hole right over here. And then there's also a drain hole from the front pocket over here. So now let me bring you back to that shield. So it has a second purpose. Okay, so one, it protects you from the radio uh, rubbing against your back. But then also it's supposed to provide you some sort of a frame structure to the assault pack. Okay, so in here you have stowed away the waist belt. So no soldier ever uses them because our assault packs are just not heavy enough to be using this. But basically you would attach the waist belt which would allow you to transfer the weight of the assault pack to your hips and uh, off your shoulders. Okay, so that's the intention of that waist belt. Also the waist belt allows you to have the assault pack secured to your back as you're running and jumping, okay? So it doesn't flop off your back. But uh, we never use it. It's uh, kind of useless in my opinion, but all right, let's carry on. All right, so now, soldiers never use this uh, white shield, so we just take it out, okay? Let me go ahead and take that out. So I have heard that people use this to uh, draw on it with a map pen and kind of, you know, give an idea of like what the next mission is going to be, uh, to brief it. I've never seen it done before. I've heard that it could have been, could be done. I don't know. Uh, anyways, I took it out because I needed to roll my soul pack and place it into my large rucksack. So for that, it was just easier for me to roll it up without that shield inside. So also you have this foam, uh, which is supposed to give comfort to the back of your soldier, but uh, I think it's absolutely useless. So anyways, both of these, uh, pretty much all soldiers, we all just kind of stow it away. All right, so now let's just go ahead and talk about this front pocket. So let me give you a bit of history on that. So this front pocket used to exist on the Large Molly 1 rucksack. So right now we have the Large Molly 2 rucksack, which does not have this pocket. So they, instead of getting rid of it altogether, they placed it onto the assault pack. So this front pocket was designed for two things, which I will tell you next. Let's open it up. And now I'm gonna show you a few things, okay? So, all right, so you probably don't know what these two snap fasteners are for, but they're on all the assault packs that we have issued by the US Army. So these are actually for a six mag bandolier pouch. So over here, you can see that there's the snap fasteners right here. So basically you would just insert it inside the uh, front pocket of your assault pack and then the second purpose is that you would insert a claymore mine So this front pocket was designed for the six mag bandolier pouch and a claymore mine Okay, so now let me show you what's the best way to uh, store this six mag bandolier pouch into this front pocket Go ahead and open all of the pouches of the mags Okay, so now you're gonna take that sling and you're gonna extend it all the way out Okay, the reason why is because whenever you're going to take this out of your assault pack, you want to have a long sling, a long sling, so that whenever you sling around your body, especially with a helmet on, it's going to be easier to secure. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to open up this mag pouch over here and you're going to S fold the sling right over here, just like this. Okay, so you just S fold it just like that, and then you're just going to secure that mag pouch. Go ahead, just like that. You're going to do the same for the opposite side. So over here, just come in like this. And now I'm just gonna secure that S fold with this mag pouch right here. And then in the center, I'm just going to as, uh, just secure those two S folds with that center pouch. So now I have a handle which will allow me to pull out this six mag bandolier pouch from this front pocket. So over here, I'm just going to place it inside. And now I'm going to 
fasten those two snap fasteners. So there's for one, and here is for the other. Right here, let me get that fastened. And there it is, okay. All right, so if I need this quick, all I would do is grab here and just pull it out, okay? And now I can sling it around my body and now I have six mags ready to go. All right, so now let's move on. The four molly webbings on the bottom of your salt pack, they're designed for one thing, and that is for your waste pack. So this is your waste pack. I put my woobie inside this just to give it some volume, give you an idea. So let me show you the official, the, so standard, as to how you attach this waste pack to your salt pack. It's gonna be for, through these bottom molly webbings with the female buckle of the waste pack, just like this, okay? And you buckle it in, same for the opposite side. and you buckle it in. Okay, there it is. So that is the intended use of those four molly webbings on the bottom of your salt pack, okay? So to fit that waste pack. So I think it's actually kind of interesting because whenever I take it off, it's actually pretty easy to take off, okay? So this is really intended for like fast use on the go type thing. All right, now let's uh, talk about some uh, mysteries over here. So basically there's kind of a myth that says that you can Use your sustainment pouch on the side of your salt pack. Uh, I think it's false, okay, and I'll tell you why. So uh, in my research, the only pack that actually fits the sustain pouch on the side is the patrol pack. We do not have that issued anymore. That was the old generation, so you would get the uh, large rucksack, the uh, patrol pack, and then the assault pack. But the patrol pack was the one that, was, uh, that could accommodate the sustainment pouch. So this one, let me show you why, and I'll show this to you live as to why it doesn't work. So over here, I'm just gonna take my sustainment pouch and I'm going to go ahead and molly it to my salt pack. Just like this. Okay, there it is. Now I'm just gonna extend it all the way down. Okay, see where this would, this would lie. It looks like it would go right here. So here we go. Just like that, just like that like that click okay now for this side where will it go it lines up right over here so on the molly that is found on the front pocket of your assault pack there it is and there it is all right so now we're in a pickle all right reason being is that now there is no molly webbing right over here to attach our last uh so webbing over here so that is why i don't believe that this is uh, made to attach a sustainment pouch to the side of the assault pack, okay? So if you really desperately wanted to use it, I guess you would just, you know, put it away like this. But uh, then again, uh, it would just be hanging on the top like that. And I'm, not, I'm just not a firm believer in things just hanging around so, uh, and dangling. So uh, I don't think that that is the intended purpose and design for the side molly webbing. So here's the alternative that I would come up with, all right? So... If you desperately need once, desperately needed some extra uh, uh, space, you could probably put a canteen pouch over here, and then a flash bag pouch over here, and do it to the opposite side as well. Okay, all right, guys. So there it is. Uh, so this front pouch, uh, the front pocket over here. You see this front pocket over here? You have the same on the inside right here. So if you open it up, it's it's secured with a hook pile tape, and just like this front one with hook pile tape. So just bear in mind that uh, if you have your six mags inserted into here, well then it will cover that little pocket in the inside, okay? And uh, so here's the, the size of that front pocket. Okay, gives you a, give you an idea. So, uh, so there it is, guys. All right, so now we have covered every single aspect of the Molly Assault Pack. I'll just go ahead and close it up. And um, I hope that this has uh, been helpful for you and that you'll be able to make better use of your issued gear. All right, guys, so I hope this was helpful for you guys. And uh, have fun, enjoy, and good luck.